This video is going to cover creating comments in our basic blog for beginners in Rails 7. You can either go watch the previous parts in the series, which will be linked down below, or you can just head over to the GitHub repo, which is linked down below, go over to code and copy the link to it, and then just do a git clone with that link and then you'll be able to CD into blog application. And then assuming you are on the uh, branch three, you'll be able to follow along. So in this case, all we have to do is run a rails db colon drop command, because I don't know if there's a database. We'll then do a rails db colon migrate command to migrate the database. And then we'll do a rails db colon seed command to seed it with the data that we have in there. And then we can do a rails s and we should be all set up. So if we open this up, oh, and don't forget to run your bundle install. We'll be on the blog page. So we can come over here and we'll see that uh, I forgot to give the user a name. So let's go do that real quick. We can come into login. The default user is dean at example.com with a password of password. And then come over here and edit our user. So we'll click on edit account, give myself that name. And then I'll just type in my old password and now we should have a username. So if we come over here, we're good to go. Uh, and it looks like the users do have views in here. So that's good. So what we wanna do is on this show page, we want to display a form to create a comment. And then we want to display the comments below that. So what we can do to get started is we can stop the server and I ran into an issue earlier. Let me just go check to make sure. Okay, so nothing's cached. So we want to generate a model. So we'll type rails G model. We'll call the model comment. And the way this is gonna work is a user will have many comments, a post will have many comments and a comment will belong to a specific post as well as a specific user. So you'll always be able to tell where a comment is located uh, and you'll also be able to grab whoever the user is uh, and grab all their comments and display it wherever you'd like. So to do that, we can start with the post. So we'll say a comment belongs to a post. So we'll say post colon belongs underscore two and then a user colon belongs underscore two. And we're actually gonna hit enter here and we're gonna skip adding in a body uh, because we're gonna be using action text for that. So after we do that, we can then run a rails db colon migrate command to migrate the database. And then because we're gonna be using action text, we can do a rails action underscore text colon install command to install action text. And then you can do a uh, rails db colon migrate command to migrate the database. And then we can exit the full screen and what we can do now is run a Rails S to start the server again. So if we restart the server, we should be good to go. We're actually gonna start by going into the views and we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call this comments. And then inside of that folder, we'll create an underscore form.html.erb. In this form, which I'll just full screen real quick, we're gonna start with a form underscore with for the model. And the way that this works in, let's say the post form is you do a form with model and then the local post. So instead of at post, you're passing in a new post. And then in here, you don't use the at. We're gonna do something similar, but we want it to be so that we have a path like slash post slash one and then slash comments slash four. So we wanna create the fourth comment for this first post. To do that, we can actually just pass in an array. So we'll say this is for post, and then we need to do something like comment.new, but we want it to be comment.new for the post. So what we can do is we can just say post.comments.build. So there's a couple things we have to set up to make this work, but we're gonna just do the form really fast uh, because this is probably the easiest part. And then in here, I'll just do a form dash control to do this. And then let me clean this up because I pressed the wrong button. And then in here, we can just do a f dot 
rich underscore text underscore area for the body. And then a f dot submit reply with a class of btn btn dash primary mt dash one. And that mt dash one is just from bootstrap, which stands for margin top. And I think it's one em that they do. Uh, but okay, so that should be it for the form. Now to make this work, because we want to go to slash post slash one slash whatever, whatever comments, we need to come into our config and our routes.rb. I need to open this up on my other screen just to make sure I don't forget anything. So in here, we have these resources for the posts. What we can do is we can just create a do block. And then in here, we can do resources comments. And this will set it up so that if we want to go to slash post slash one slash comments slash four, we can do that with how this is set up. So we can actually save the routes at this point. We should be good here and we can come over to our posts show page. And then at the bottom here, we'll do a dot container. And then in here, we'll just do a render comments slash form. And then we'll pass in the post, which is at post in here because I can see it right up here. That should be it for the show page. Now let's generate a controller. So we'll stop our server, full screen this. And we'll do a Rails G controller comments, and we won't generate any actions for it. So we can exit the full screen, run a Rails S again, and then we can full screen this and come up to our app controllers, comments controller, because now we have to do our magic in here. So we start with a before action for authenticate user, which I think we, yes, we covered it last time. So basically this just checks to make sure that you're logged in. And then we are gonna have a create action, a destroy action. And then we're gonna have a private comment params method. And in here, all we're gonna do is say params.require comment, and then we're gonna permit. And I think we called this body in the form. Yep. So we're just gonna permit the body. So in terms of permitting the body, we can go over to our model and our comment.rb. And then we can just say this has rich text for the colon body. And it's as easy as that to get the rich text attached to the body. You don't even need a migration for it. Now for the post, we wanna say a post has many comments. And then we're gonna say dependent, we're gonna spell it correctly, dependent destroy. Now the difference between dependent destroy and dependent delete is if you have something like uh, after destroy, I don't know, uh, notify admin of bad behavior as a callback, I think with destroy, it'll do this for every single comment, but with delete, it won't. And with the dependent destroy, it's just saying that if I delete this post, I want you to delete all of these comments, which makes sense because we don't wanna have just random comments floating around in the wild. We can now grab this, come over to our user, and we can do the same thing here. And we'll actually change the post to be dependent destroy as well. And then we can exit out of our user.rb, oops, our user.rb and our post.rp, because I think we're done with both. And I think we're actually done with our comment as well for now. So now we can come into our create. And what we wanna do in our create is, assuming I get this formatted correctly, we want to do a at post, and GitHub Copilot's gonna be helping out here. And then we wanna do post.find params post ID. We then want a at comment equal to at post.comments.create and we'll create it with the comment params. Then we wanna do a at comment.user equals current user. And then if comment.save, you can say something like flash notice comment was created and then we'll redirect to the post. Uh, otherwise we can do a flash alert saying the comment has not been created and we'll just redirect to the post path. 
So that is our very basic create action set up here. Uh, now let's do the destroy. So for the destroy, what we can do is we can say at post equals post.find. And I'm actually finding myself doing this in both of these methods. So what we can do is we can cut this out of here, remove it from here and do a def set post, paste it in. And we can come up to the top and say before action set post. And that'll now set the post automatically so we don't have to do it. So in our destroy, we can do a at comment equals at post dot comments dot find params ID. And then we can do a at comment dot destroy. And that'll just destroy or delete the comment for us. Uh, and then afterwards, we can do a redirect to the post if, if we would like to. Let's now come over to our post show page where I think we're rendering this form. So let's come over here, we'll refresh. We now have our rich form. So let's just say some words go here and let's just double click words and bold it. We'll hit reply. We can see the comment was created and we're getting two alerts here. Our show page has a set of notices here. So if we get rid of this show page notice, and now if we re refresh, we are now doing a comment has been created, which is coming from the alerts we created in our layouts alerts partial. So now we only have one set, but okay, we're, we're creating the comments, but we're not showing them. So how do we show the comments? If we come in here, and below the comments form, we can do something like a, uh, let's keep it in the container. So let's just do a render. And instead of this, we'll say comment. So we want to render comment slash comment where we pass in a post and we want to pass in a comment, which will be without an at comment. And the way we can do this is by saying at comments, dot each do comment. It's getting to the point where it doesn't even sound like a word anymore. But if we do it like this, and then we tab over, we can grab all of the comments that belong to this post. And then for each one, we can render a partial. So we don't actually have this at comments being defined yet. The way we can do it, it's not going to be in the comments controller, but it'll be in the post controller inside of the show. We can do at comments equals at post dot comments. And then we can even do a order. Uh, and we can do like created at DESC. Uh, I actually don't know if it's dot order dot order by, but I guess we'll find out. So if we do that and then we refresh, uh, we are missing a partial for comments underscore comment. So let's come up to or down to our views comments, we'll right click new file underscore comment singular html.erb. And then in here we can do a div with a class equal to the comment dash and then we'll just put in the comment .id. And then we'll give it a container. And then we can close this div. Uh, and actually, I think I put some styles on this, which was style equal to border of one pixel solid black with a padding of one EM and a margin of one EM. And that's just to add a bit of flavor. Uh, and then next we did a comment.user.email. Although you could also do the name, I guess, but we at least know that everyone has an email with how I've set this up. Uh, and then we can do a span. And this is going to be for our time. So we'll say this was posted and then we'll do time ago in words, comment dot created at, and then below this, we can do a check to see if the current user is equal to comment dot user. So if the, if the user that is looking at this page is equal to the person who made the comment, they can then have a delete button. So we can do a uh, div with a class of beat or button dash group, 
uh, and then a class of float dash end. Tab that over. And then we can do a button to delete. And for the path, it'll be just like with the form. We'll do post comma con comment. And then we can do a class of btn btn dash danger with a method colon colon delete. So that takes care of our deletion. Let's come down here and do a HR. And then let's do the actual comment dot body. We save all that. I think that's for this div. This is tabbed over. I think we're good. Oh, and that would be why this needs to be an end, not a else. So if we save that, we should get tabbed over. And now if we refresh, you can see all of my different comments here. If I click on one of these, it should show that I deleted it in the console, which it did. And you see it also deletes the action text as well. Uh, and then we can, of course, delete another one. Now let's come over and let's do a incognito tab, go over to localhost port 3000, and we'll sign up with a new email. We'll say john at doe.com with a name of John. And we'll just give it a password of password. Let's come over to blog and we need to go to post 10, which is the one we're on. Oops, not user. We need to go to show this post. You can see here that I don't see the delete button from myself. Test case, and maybe we'll italicize this. And then we'll hit reply. And then if I refresh over here, you can see the italicized stuff, but I don't have the option to delete John's comment. Now you'll also notice that this isn't being updated in real time. If you'd like to see how to do real-time updates, maybe do a chat room with direct messages. Uh, I have a whole playlist for that, uh, and you can actually find that video right here.